The Apostle Paul, writing to the Colossian believers in chapter 4 and verse 2 says, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us, that God would open to us a door for the word, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which also I am in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Pray for us that God would open to us a door for the word. It was quite some years ago that the Lord laid on my heart the fact that so many people seem to be beating their heads against the wall when they were trying to evangelize. And I could almost hear the Lord speaking from heaven, would you folks like to know where the doors are? Because I'm able to open doors that no one can shut. I was heading over to Ireland at that time, and uh, the brother who had been arranging meetings for me there said we have everything scheduled except one Sunday night, and we're looking to see what we can do there. And I said, well, brother, let's just leave that night free and pray that God will give us an open door. And so we did. Well, I was speaking on a weekend to a group of couples. They were meeting in Enniskillen. And after my first message, everyone broke for a cup of tea, and they all went off to socialize, and there was one man left. And he came over to me, we began to talk, he introduced himself, told me his name was Michael, and that he was an attorney, a solicitor, from the south of Ireland, and that uh, he had been walking through the Dublin airport when someone had given him a gospel CD. It was a message that he felt was timely for the people of Ireland, and when he found out that the one who spoke that message was going to be at this conference, he came to see me, and he said, I would like you to come to my home, and I will fill my home with my friends, and you can tell them what they need to hear. And when I asked him, when would be the best time to do it? No surprise, it was that very Sunday evening that we had left free for the Lord to open a door. I'll never forget that evening. We arrived and they had a lovely meal for me. And then he asked me if I would like to go and sit in a side room to prepare my thoughts while they cleaned up the dishes. And then I wish you could have heard the way this couple welcomed their neighbors and friends into the home. It was just beautiful. And eventually he came to the door and said, we're ready. And I went down And there in that room was the cream of the town. There were uh, professors and a chiropractor and a doctor and other lawyers, um, serious people. And he said, we've all listened to your message. We know what you believe. And we won't limit you by time or text. You just tell us what we need to hear. I didn't get back to my hotel that night till 2.30 in the morning. And these people were very, very eager, very serious about spiritual things. And as I thought of these words, pray for us that God would open to us a door for the word. Perhaps you know evangelists, missionaries, personal workers, Sunday school workers, children's workers in public schools. Could you take a little time today and pray for them that God would open a door for the word in their lives? These kinds of opportunities, I believe, are everywhere. But we need to ask God to open those doors and then be ready to go through them when he opens them up. So you can have a strategic role to play in the advancement of the gospel today, if you would lay hold of this promise that God will answer those prayers, and if you would lay claim to this beautiful request that comes from the heart of the Apostle Paul, pray for us that God 
would open to us a door for the Word. Mm-hmm.